Hi there and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about garden news, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer E. Blaine, and today is April 13th. Today we celebrate a writer and avid gardener who gardened beside her mother for decades. We'll learn about a botanist and a prolific plant collector who botanized alongside her minister husband as he worked in the Philippines. We'll hear some thoughts today about how quickly spring goes by, and we grow that garden library with a book about Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker. And then we'll wrap things up with International Plant Appreciation Day. But first, here's today's curated news. Today's curated news comes to us from House and Garden. It was written by Judith Tankard, and the title is An Introduction to the Gardens of the Arts and Crafts Movement. Judith is a landscape scholar, and in her book, Gardens of the Arts and Crafts Movement, Judith takes her readers on a journey through garden design during this important era of gardening. Now, what I love about this article is that it features some beautiful images of gardens that really represent the arts and crafts movement. And much of this article is actually an excerpt from Judith's amazing book. Judith writes, The arts and crafts movement championed the unity of the arts in which the house, the furnishing of its interiors, and the surrounding garden were considered a whole. They were all connected. And this all happened at a time when architects not only saw to every detail of the house and its interiors, but routinely laid out the gardens. And the result were these beautiful gardens that were in perfect harmony with the house. Now, if you would like to read Judith's wonderful article for yourself, all you need to do is hop into the Facebook group for listeners of the show and then head on up to the little magnifying glass and search for the word movement and Judith's article on the arts and crafts movement will pop right up. Now, if you're not in the group for the show, don't worry about it. It is so easy to join. All you need to do is search for the words Daily Gardener Community, or you'd search for a friend and then request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. It's time for today's botanical history. Here's botanical history for April 13th. Today is the birthday of the Pulitzer Prize winning American short story writer and novelist Eudora Welty, who was born on this day, April 13th in 1909. An avid gardener, Eudora was inspired by nature. Her writing includes references to over 150 different plants, and Eudora's garden writing is a delight. In her book, Losing Battles, she wrote, As Lady May gazed at him, her eyes opened all the way, like vinca flowers at midday. In a 1972 interview with the Washington Post, Eudora talked about the plant explorers who went to Nepal and Sikkim, risking their lives to introduce alpine flowers to gardens. Eudora said, Now that's something. Discovering new primroses. That's worth taking trouble with. Worth risking something for. Today, Eudora Welty's home and garden in Jackson, Mississippi, offers guided tours and interpretive museum exhibits. The historic botanical garden was designed by Eudora's mother, Chestina Welty, in 1925. For two decades, Eudora and her mother worked together in the garden. Today, the garden is tended by volunteers who call themselves the Serious Weeders. It's a reference to a favorite wealthy plant, 
the night blooming Sirius. And when it was blooming, Eudora would host dusk to dawn parties in honor of the bloom. It was Eudora Welty who wrote, Gardening is akin to writing stories. No experience could have taught me more about grief or flowers, about achieving survival by going, your fingers in the ground, the limit of physical exhaustion. And today is the anniversary of the death of the botanist and prolific plant collector, Mary Strong Clemens, who died on this day, April 13th in 1968. When she was 19 years old, Mary married a minister named Joseph Clemens. Joseph was a chaplain in the United States Army, and he served in the Philippines and then later in France during World War I. And for her part, Mary was a maniacal plant collector, and wherever Joseph was stationed, she would collect plants. A faithful pastor's wife, sometimes Mary would offer lessons on biblical scripture or sing hymns in exchange for lodging. The years that Mary and Joseph spent in the Philippines were particularly productive for Mary's botanizing. And when Joseph retired, he became Mary's assistant, and they worked together as a team. They had a whole system worked out. Mary would collect the plants and Joseph processed them. He dried them and then boxed them up for shipping. Joseph and Mary traveled the world together. They spent time in Asia between the First and Second World Wars. And by 1935, they found themselves in New Guinea. One night, Joseph ate some food that was contaminated by wild boar meat. The food poisoning was too much for his system, and he died on January 21st in 1936. This past year, the New Zealand citizen scientist Siobhan Leachman tweeted that she had stumbled on a specimen of a tree that Mary had collected just six days after her husband died. In the lower left-hand corner of the specimen sheet is a label that's titled Flora of New Guinea. Mary labeled it M. Clemenzii, and there, in her own handwriting, she wrote, It was under this tree that my soul's companion for over 40 years of wedded life bade me farewell for the higher life. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come from the Chinese author Xiao Hung from the book Selected Stories of Xiao Hung. In our part of the country, spring passes quickly. If you haven't been out for five days, you find the trees in bud. If you don't see the trees for another five days, you discover that they've put on leaves in another five days, they're so green, you wouldn't recognize them. It makes you wonder, can these be the same trees I saw a few days before? And you answer yourself, of course they are. That's how fast spring goes by. You can almost see it. From far away, it comes racing toward you, and when it reaches you, it whispers in your ear, I'm here, and then runs swiftly on. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Imperial Nature by Jim Indersby. This book came out in 2010, and the subtitle is Joseph Hooker and the Practices of Victorian Science. 
In this book, Jim provides a fantastic overview of a man that he believes was the perfect embodiment of Victorian science. The Victorian era of science was marked by significant shifts in empire, professionalism, and philosophical practices. An early believer in the work of his dear friend, Charles Darwin, Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker was a pioneer as a successful full-time scientist. And Joseph was instrumental in not only getting Darwin's work published, but also publicized. Joseph was an explorer, he served as president of the Royal Society, and he was also the director of the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q. In his position, Joseph masterfully coordinated and orchestrated all of the botanic gardens in the world. To Joseph, those botanic gardens were essentially laboratories that were working to enhance the world's economy and promote trade. And in 1877, Joseph was knighted for his scientific services to the British Empire. This book is 429 pages of the life of the brilliant pioneer and concise botanist Joseph Dalton Hooker. You can get a copy of Imperial Nature by Jim Endersby and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $20. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today, April 13th, is a special day for gardeners. It's International Plant Appreciation Day. Now, the therapeutic value of plants has been the subject of countless studies. But I love what the famous doctor, writer, and garden lover Oliver Sacks wrote about gardening. He wrote, in 40 years of medical practice, I have found only two types of non-pharmaceutical therapy to be vitally important for patients with chronic neurological diseases, music and gardens. Oliver practiced medicine across from the New York Botanical Garden, and he would often take his breaks in the garden. He wrote, I used to come in every day. Specifically, I would come in after seeing my patients, but before writing up my notes. And I would walk around the garden and put everything out of consciousness except the plants and the air. But by the time I got back, the patient's story would have crystallized in my mind, and then I could write it straight away. But I needed this sort of incubation in the garden and to go for a walk in the garden. That sort of thing is an essential thing for me in writing. I think nature has a healing effect, and the garden is the closest one can come to nature. And whenever people come to New York from out of town or out of the country, I say, let's go to the garden. And then Oliver would quote a couple of lines from a T.S. Eliot poem. Oh, do not ask, what is it? Let us go and make our visit. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove and Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Bierbaum, and Eric Begay. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at the daily gardener.org. 
I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.